Yeah. Okay. Uh, first off, if I could ask Pastor Doug to give us an invocation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Doug. I'm a staff chaplain here at Medical Center Hospital. I'm subbing in for Dr. Arter here this evening. Please continue to pray for Dr. Arter, Sam and Kelly, and their family facing physical challenges. Just a quick footnote, uh, we had the most incredible staff that I've ever been around in my 30 years of professional caregiver and professional care provider. Uh, they just never cease to amaze me. Uh, I'm, I'm up there with them all day long, every day, and they're just they're just amazing. So I, I commend them. Let's pray. Father, we, we truly do love you, and, and we thank you. And it takes real people of faith to thank you during difficult times. But that's what we do, Lord, because we want to, we want to please you. So, Father, I pray that today that you would just take and continue to give our leadership wisdom, give us knowledge, and then give us the understanding to put the hands and the feet to what we need to around here. Father, I pray right now for this uh, pandemic, this number, uh, we've consistently been in the 20s for the last three plus weeks, and we're just about to break down into the teens just real soon, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray this thing right out the door, dear Lord, and we're gonna give you all the glory, we're gonna give you all the honor, we're gonna give you all the praise. Keep us safe, keep us out of harm's way, and we'll give you all the glory for it. In your holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Y'all stand for the pledge. I'd like to lead to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mission Vision Values. Medical Center Health System is a community based teaching organization dedicated to providing high quality and affordable health care to improve the health and the wellness of the residents of the Permian Basin. Our vision is that we will be the premier source for health and wellness and our values is the I care statement for integrity, customer-centered, accountability, respect, and excellence. I don't think so. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Next, we, uh, we have a consent agenda. You guys look that over. Any motion on the consent agenda? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same. Motion carries. And committee reports. Ms. Dodd, finance committee. The Finance Committee met today at 5 o'clock and we reviewed and approved uh, the financial report month ending of July 31st, 2020, um, and several agreements that are listed on your agenda, and then a capital expenditure request for a sterilizer. And I would move to approve the Finance Committee report. Second. A motion and second on the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. And a notice of meeting to vote on the tax rate, Mr. Yoon. Okay, I'm going to pass out. This is the tax actual public hearing notice that we talked about at last week's board meeting. This is the form or the, 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 the essence of the form that will be published in Thursday's paper. Um, we do need to take a vote of the board. We're not voting for the tax. We are voting to issue the public notice of the tax rate to take um, comments on uh, September the 10th and that the vote for the tax rate would be on September 17th. But this will be the notice that will be in Thursday's paper. I do have uh, here an area for the members of the governing body to vote on the proposed tax increase of 15 cents per $100 assessed value. You can see where we were with the proposed tax rate, the new tax, the no new revenue tax rate of 11.4 cents per hundred and the voter approved tax rate of 23.58. We're coming in at 15 cents per 
100, which is our tax ceiling that we talked about. I'm ready, I'll give this to you. And so we have, according to the Truth and Taxation um, Law, we have to post a public hearing on the tax increase. And for that, we also have to take a vote uh, for, against, present, not voting, or absent uh, on posting this tax increase. So, uh, Chairman, why don't you come back to that? Okay. Should we take a roll first? Hang on just a second. Take it back. Yeah. But this, this, is, this is simply just a vote to have the hearing. Is that right? That's you're correct. Talking? That's right. So this is not a roll call vote on the tax rate itself. That is correct. This is to post the hearing. To post the hearing, yes. And that and, and that we're it has been suggested that we'll be at 15 cents. This isn't to vote yes or no for that. This is just a vote that 15 cents has been proposed. And then we're going to publish this and then have a hearing on the 10th. Okay. First I uh, will do a roll call on this uh, before we take that vote. Uh Bryn Dodd. I here. Richard Herrera. Present. Don Hallmark here. Ben Kiros. Here. Mary Lou Anderson. Here. David Don. Here. Wallace Don. Here. So all, is, all are present and I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion and second as read. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same. Yes. Motion there. And uh, uh, CEO report. I will get my report. Uh, I know Dr. Benalini is on the phone. Dr. Benalini, if you can hear us, um, I know that you want to give the opportunity. Did you want to say, uh, speak to the board tonight? Star six, unmute. If you do, Dr. Bentley, you need to hit star six on your phone to unmute it. Or if he's on the computer, can we unmute? Do you know what his number is? Give us a second, Dr. Bentley. We're going to see and figure out. I don't think he switched over. He was on the other one. Yeah, I don't see him either. He was on the other one. Cool. Let's go ahead and do your report. And if we if he shows back up on that, y'all will let us know, please. And then, uh, then we'll go from there. Yes, sir. My report just a few things. And the COVID 19 update. <clears throat> I'm sure as you all have uh, heard and we've been in some communication, our COVID number continues to be better, uh, flat to better. Uh, today we have 22 uh, COVID patients in house. Interestingly enough, 11 of those are from the nursing home. So if you take those 11 out, then you're down to 11 from the community. Right? Fair enough. I mean, that's where we are. Um, so that number continues to hang in the 20s. Now we've kind of moved into the low 20s. One thing that's been very interesting, uh, David and I attended a meeting today with the school superintendent spoke, and their COVID situation is good. It looks real good. And in fact, any positive COVID test they've had, they can link that directly to the community exposure and not an in-school exposure. So they're about three weeks into their school year. They're increasing more students every day. Uh, every week they're adding a couple, three to 4,000 more students. And they have done a very, it's been very low the positivity rate. So that's um, that's been good news. I think that's a win for us. But um, we are continuing to uh, work with our families. We know we did start the end of life one visitor with the end of life um, with that, and with, uh, we have a waiver for them to sign, and we are gearing them up all the way. And so far, we've had a good response to that. Uh, that of course. Um, the family's been very appreciative, but it's gone pretty smooth. Any, anything with that, Kristen? Do you, anything? No, the families are very appreciative, um, but we've not had any. In fact, they decline and say, you know, we appreciate you guys making the effort, but I think there's still a fear um, of, 
and tracking the COVID. And we did let one family in and they didn't realize that the director spoke Spanish or understood Spanish. So in Spanish, they were saying things like, what if it gets on my shoes? What if it does this and that? So there's still, I think, a, a fear um, in our community about the realism of COVID stuff. So <clears throat> we haven't had many. If you remember, we are under executive order until September 29th from Governor Abbott as far as visitors are concerned. I will tell you, Kristen and I talked quite a bit, uh, more than I really ever want to talk to her about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, about we, we do have on a case by case basis, especially when there's somebody who's uh, handicapped or somebody who needs blind or deaf. We do work that pretty good to try to get somebody with those patients. Uh, I'm hoping with the decreased rate that's going on in the state of Texas that the governor will visit this before September 29th. Uh, but at the same time, um, I think that our staff has done a pretty good job of keeping people protected. And uh, even with the availability of coming in, uh, we've had people turn us down for that. So, uh, But just the bottom line is um, the number is better. Uh, it's not over. The masking is still uh, it's still in effect here. We have everybody masked as much as possible and the hand washing, but uh, just in the overall. Um, Dr. Vinton, do you want to ask anything about the curve? I mean, or did I get a cover? I think you can see that it's just leveled off. You might like see it declining more, but it's level. So that's positive, but it would be better if it declined. Um, and so any questions about that? If not, I'll move forward. Anything? All right, and then in my, also my report, I have uh, Mallory's uh, regional report, and that's going to keep it pretty short for tonight. And I, I'll save my other comments for executive session, unless you have any questions for me. Okay, unless we have anything else, then we're going to go into executive session. Uh, meeting held in closed session involving any of the following. Uh, number one, consultation with the attorney regarding legal matters and legal issues pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. Number two, deliberation regarding exchange case of value of real property pursuant to 551.072 of the Texas Government Code. Number three, deliberation and evaluation of officers and employees of Epic County Hospital District pursuant to section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code. And four, deliberation regarding negotiations for health care services pursuant to section 551.085 of the Texas Government Code. Number five, information that if released or disclosed would give advantage to a competitor as per section 552.104 of the Texas Government Code. And number six, advice, recommendations, opinions, and other material reflecting the policy making processes of the Edgar County Hospital District as per section 551.552.111 of the Texas Government Code. We're adjourned. Thanks, Thanks.